Okay, so basically the art of kind of like guessing what something is. So using some reasonable parameters, doing a bit of maths, and working out what the answer to something should be, you know, plus or minus 100%, you know, just to make sure that your kind of like your guess is makes sense with your understanding of how the Earth works. Um, okay, so these are, yeah, so it's named after kind of this uh, Fermi problem, Enrico Fermi, who was kind of like this like really clever guy who basically invented the atom bomb, mostly. Um, but he, um, he was very, very kind of... Uh, keen on these kind of exercises where you're basically guessing the answer, seeing if it's about right, and that tells you if you understand how the system works. Um, okay, so we're not really looking for the exact answer, we're just looking for is it to within order of magnitude, so is it within a factor of 10, basically, of the right answer. Okay, uh, and when you do these things, uh, it's really important to show if you're working, okay, when you do this, because this basically, uh, if you get the wrong answer, you get something that's really weird, then you can go back through and find out which step might have been you're making a, a bad assumption or your model, okay, of how you think the Earth works is a bit is a bit off. Okay, so this was the example of the the mass of the atmosphere, okay, and uh, all we're basically asking you to do is work out how much what is the like the amount of stuff in the atmosphere, and we can guess that from no, just one piece of information knowing what atmospheric pressure is, okay, because the mass of the atmosphere is just um, is simply related to the force of the atmosphere pushing down on the Earth. Um, so uh, just quickly, I think we'll just quickly go through. Um, so the atmospheric pressure is 10 to the 5 newtons per meter squared, okay, so that's uh, 10 to the 5 newtons uh, per meter squared, okay? So if we wanted to work out, um, uh, if we wanted to work out the uh, total mass of the atmosphere, we could work out basically the mass per meter squared and then just times it up by the area of the Earth, okay? Now, a newton is a unit of force, okay? And force is equal to mass times acceleration. Okay? And in this case, the acceleration that's providing the force on the ground is the acceleration due to gravity. Okay? So we can change that A to a G. Okay? So our force is equal to mass times acceleration due to gravity. We can just rearrange that equation to get mass is equal to force divided by gravity. So the mass... Okay, so the mass of uh, per unit area is going to be equal to uh, mass per area is going to be equal to the force, which is 10 to the 5 newtons per meter squared, divided by gravity, which is 9.81 meters per second squared. And that would be newton per meter squared. Okay? So we could, we could work out what that is, okay? We could divide 10 to the 5 by 9.81, okay? Or we could do this guesstimation thing, okay? So we could start guessing what the answer is by simplifying this out. So that's the same as writing 10 to the 5 divided by 10, roughly 9.81, approximately 10. So we're just guessing that out there. So that's the same as writing 10 to the 5 times 10 to the minus 1, yeah? I'm all happy with that. And then that's obviously then the same as 10 to the 4. Okay? And that is in the units of kilograms per meter squared. Okay? So what we need to do now is we need to think about what the area of the Earth is. Okay? So the area of a sphere is equal to 4 pi r squared, okay? So there's a bunch of formula for the volumes and surface area of things. Um, this is one of the ones you should probably know. Uh, and in this case, we need the um, radius of the Earth. Does anybody know the radius of the Earth? No, neither, right? 
But I know that it's approximately 6.471 something, something, something kilometers. Okay? So I don't know what it is exactly, but I'm just going to say it's 6, 6 kilometers. So R equals 6 kilometers, roughly. It's part of this guesstimation process. Okay? So we're going to then say that the area is 4 times pi, so 4 times 3, roughly times 6 times 10, convert that into metres, because we convert everything into SI units before we do our calculations. Okay, it makes everything a lot simpler. So 6 times 10 to the, uh, I don't know, it's not 6 kilometres. The radius of the Earth is not 6 kilometres. You idiots. 6,000 kilometres. That's what I thought it was a bit funny. Okay, so this is why it's easy to spot mistakes, okay, if you write everything out. 6 times 10 to the 6 metres, okay? And all of that is square, okay? So we can then start to look at these and think, right, well, how can we actually, we could can, we can, we can work that out if we wanted to. I mean, 4 times 3 is 12 times 6 squared is 36 times 10 to the 6 squared, which is... 10 to the 12, yeah, excellent. So because we're, we're, we're raising a power to another power, you, you times them together. Uh, 12, yeah, we said 12, okay, good. Um, uh, 12 times 36, okay, so you could work that out if you wanted to, if you want to get a calculator out, or if you think you know your 36 times table. Uh, or you could say, well, if I make that a bit smaller and that a bit bigger, Okay, make that 10, make that 40. That gives me 400 times 10 to the 12. Yeah? Happy campers? So that's the same as saying 4 times 10 to the 14. Meters squared. Okay? So now I've got my area. Area. And I've got my... Uh, how many kilograms per meter squared? Okay, so I just need to times those two numbers together. So if I've got my mass, total mass, uh, total mass of the atmosphere, total mass atmosphere is equal to the uh, mass per area times the area. Pretty simple so far, so we can then. Uh, say our mass per unit area is 4 times 10 to the 14, okay, times 10 to the 4. Okay, and then we get the answer, which would then be 4 times 10, 4 times 10 to the 18 kilograms. Like you know. Okay, and we could then, ta-da! Okay, so I actually managed to get the right answer, which is quite impressive for me. Okay, so we could use that to say, well, okay, so uh, that's all well and good, uh, but could we actually use this in a kind of a, in a, in a useful kind of way? So, um, unfortunately, the next two slides uh, are on my computer uh, in my office, and I can't connect to it from here. So, I'm going to take this a little bit further from the homework and say that we have birds... Um, uh, 400 gigatons of carbon as by humanity, which is burnt some coal, put that CO2 in the atmosphere. And during that time, since the Industrial Revolution, the atmospheric concentration of CO2, so CO2 atmosphere, has gone from 180. Two hundred and eighty, just that's two hundred and eighty, to four hundred parts per million volume. Okay. So one thing that we could do is we could use some of this this guesstimation that we've done to try and work out do we understand the system? Okay. If we look at if we try and convert how much carbon we've put in the atmosphere in terms of mass, does that explain the increase in concentration? Okay, pretty straightforward. 
So what we could do is work out, so first of all, parts per million, that just means if you had, uh, in this case, parts per million volume. So that means if you had a, a million, one part per million, if you had a million um, meters cubed of atmosphere, one of those meters cubed would be pure CO2, obviously mixed, mixed in with the whole atmosphere. Now, it actually does make a small difference whether you think of volume or mass. So one unit volume of atmosphere is not the same as, it's not the same for all of the different gases. Okay? But we'll just ignore that to start with and just say parts per million mass. So for every one million, uh, for every, in the atmosphere now, for every um, one million um, grams of atmosphere, there are four, 400 of those million are, are CO2. Okay? So we start out with seeing if we can explain uh, the, the, basically the, the, this change. So this change would be 120 parts per million, the difference, that increase by that adding to this atmosphere. Okay? So all we need to do is basically to turn this, first of all, 400 gigatons. So that's 400 times 10 to the 9 tons, and then 10 times 10 to the uh, 3, so it's 1,000 kilograms in a ton. So that's how many kilograms of carbon we've added to the atmosphere. Okay? Yeah? So there's a slight caveat to this in that the mass of CO2 is not just the mass of carbon. Okay? So, uh, uh, if you want to go from carbon to CO2, carbon has got a mass of 12, CO2 has got a mass of 44. Okay? So if we wanted to work out the mass of um, CO2, we would times this by 44 divided by 12. Okay? So that would then be the mass of CO2. Okay, we could we could work we could work that out. We could do some more guesstimation. We could go well, four divided by forty-four divided by twelve, four. Make that four. Um, so we then have uh, uh, we just make this. You see, this is why we use this scientific notation here because we we start to make this a bit simpler. Four times four times ten to the 2 times 10 to the 9 times 10 to the 3, okay, then we can very simply make 4 times 4 is 16 times 10 to the 9 plus 3 plus 2, 14, okay, which is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the 15, yeah? Um, so that is how many kilograms we've added to the atmosphere in terms of CO2. So to work out what percentage of the atmosphere, what part of the atmosphere we've, we've increased by adding CO2, it's just the mass of CO2 divided by the total mass of the atmosphere, which is mass of CO2, 1.6 times 10 to the 15 divided by 1 point, what was that, what did I said here? 14. Four come from. Divided by four times ten to the eighteen. Yeah? So that is one point six divided by four, anybody? Zero point four. Yeah, si yeah, sixteen divided by four is four. Okay, just move the decimal point up. So zero point four times 10 to the 10 to the 15 divided by 10 to the 18 be 10 to the 10 to the 3 minus 3 yeah okay because we're 15 divided by 18 so it's 15 minus 18 minus 3 okay so we've got for every one gram okay of atmosphere or one kilogram of atmosphere we, we have added 0.4 times 10 to the minus 3 kilograms, or whatever you need, of, of CO2. 
So we can convert that into this parts per million unit just by timesing it by times by 10 to the 6 to get parts per million. Okay, so that would be 0.4 times 10 to the times 10 to the 3 now. Okay, which is essentially 400 parts per million. Okay? So how does that compare to our estimate of, well, our actual, this is a natural measurement. So we know we can measure this concentration of the atmosphere now. We measured it in the Industrial Revolution. It's gone up about 100 and a bit parts per million. It might be 180 it started off at. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. So it's gone up one or 200 parts per million. Okay, how does that compare with our answer? Do we understand the system? Okay, guesstimating wise, yeah, we kind of do. It's kind of within the same order of magnitude. So if we account for all of our carbon that we've burnt, that kind of does explain the CO2 concentration in the atmosphere. As it turns out, this number is probably a little bit more accurate than we're giving us credit for in terms of it is actually quite a lot bigger than the concentration of CO2 gone up in the atmosphere. Okay? Because not all of the CO2 that we've burnt, not all of that has gone into the atmosphere. Okay? So when we actually do this accounting exercise properly, this number is quite a lot bigger than this number. And that's because instead of going to the atmosphere, quite a lot of carbon dioxide goes into the ocean, it dissolves in seawater. Quite a lot of it has gone into the biosphere. So although we've been chopping down trees left, right, and center, the terrestrial biosphere has been storing carbon for us and keeping it out of the atmosphere. Okay? So just to, so we, can, we can kind of start to make those kind of arguments about the climate system, about kind of Earth systems, by doing these kind of just guesstimating what the, uh, the values and equations are before we go on and actually worry about finding out the exact values to put into these things. Okay? Uh, what are we doing?